Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Linda Eskin Revervick. She's one of seven candidates for mayor in Nashville. The first election will be held in August, probably a runoff coming up in September. Linda, your mantra in this campaign has been that you want to make Nashville a smarter city in terms of using, utilizing technology. Why did you pick that as the major theme? I mean, you talk about that more than you talk about anything else. I did a lot of research, Pat, on what other cities are doing that have been very successful, not only in the U.S., but around the world, and they have shown that we can't grow. I mean, we are so lucky. We're in a position where our city is enjoying fantastic growth, but this growth can't keep going without building the platform underneath and making sure the city works. Technology, innovation are the solutions to make that happen. So that's the first Do point. Do voters care, though, about being a well, smarter city? Well, this is why they should care. Number two is that being smarter means we're going to reduce cost. We're going to run more efficiently and effectively. We're going to communicate with them. We're going to open up Nashville so that, that we're integrated and able to help people navigate through the government quickly, but to make their day better, to give them their time back, and to make sure that we're running more productively. But if all your opponents were here with you and we asked them, well, were you for a smarter Nashville, they'd all say yes. So what makes you different because you're for a smarter Nashville? Because I'm bringing the ideas that we're going to make the buildings energy efficient so that they are responding real time to people in the buildings, lights on and off, remote street lights on and off. Why is that important? We can get savings of 20 and 30 percent of what we're spending. I'm talking about sensors on traffic lights and in streets so that people are moving where they need to go. We're seeing 14 percent to 40 percent reduction in travel time in other cities. That's why Nashvilleians care is because we're going to be able to take advantage of what we're doing every day in our lives in our city. But what's the price tag on that? Because, you know, normally for people when they deal with their computer, they buy it the first year, it's wonderful, the second year it's okay, by the third year it's a piece of junk and they're not supporting it anymore. So technology can be very, very expensive. Well, actually, and it can also be less expensive because it has a return on investment. So if you go back to my example on energy, if we reduce our cost 20 to 30 percent, those are funds that we're going to get back. And there are companies who will come in, make the investment actually operate it for us and then take those savings and we can have a performance-based reward system for both of us. So my approach is going to be to put money back in by using technology. Do what other cities have done. You know, build a transportation network that is real-time efficient. And the great thing too, Pat, is that we can look at solutions now that are going to take us years and years into the future, not like a personal computer, but 10 and 20 years into the future by being smarter about how we use technology and innovation. I know in terms of being smarter, you've talked about wanting to do that in education, you've talked about wanting to do that in public safety, you've talked about certainly about doing that in terms of traffic. Are you willing to pledge that you can do those things, pay for it, and not have to have a tax increase? I am not proposing a tax increase, let me be very clear about that, but what I will tell you but is the But these smart beauty, things won't cause a tax well, increase. And the beauty, that's correct, and the beautiful thing about these solutions is that we will do a proof of concept. So these are, so let's look at testing out buildings and using remote real-time sensors. I can go do that and I can show you here were the results, and, and again, this is a team that will do this, but working together with fantastic employees and, and very sharp suppliers. We will test it out. Same thing with traffic. So what I'm proposing is what I've done for 39 years, which is to have a phase one that says, here's the proof of concept, here's the pilot, here's what that cost, here was the return, now let's make a decision to go forward. I, you can always make minor adjustments, you can change your assumptions, because these are not solutions that mean you're going to roll them out and in six months to a year you've now spent hundreds of millions of dollars and there's no way to go back. Now as Mayor Dean goes out of office, he's having a bricks and mortar controversy in about three areas. One is about building the new flood wall downtown for $100 million. He's also talking about wanting to close the criminal justice center, move the police headquarters to Jefferson Street, and the current jail there out to Antioch where there are other correctional facilities. Right. But a lot of those communities don't feel like they've been talked to about that. Yes. Should the council defer this for the next mayor to, and the next council to consider, or should they go ahead and move ahead Tuesday night when they vote on that budget? My understanding is that they're talking about deferring the decision on moving the jail and moving the police headquarters, and those are the two topics in which the community definitely has expressed their viewpoint that they have not had enough information and due diligence. And you And agree? so as our next mayor, well, I, the people are speaking to me, absolutely, and as our next mayor, my process will be a lot of significant planning up front 
making sure that we do studies based on facts and that everyone gets the facts. It will be a very open and inclusive administration. And I have talked a lot about that. I like bringing people to the table. So you'd like it to be, you'd like sides. those two to be deferred for further studies so that I if you're mayor, yes, you can deal with ab it. Absolutely, we need to get more input and is the, what I would suggest. And the flood wall needs to move ahead. I'm a proponent of that. I think we've got the information. I, I am very confident that the study has been done, that we've seen all the alternatives, that this is important. We have 7,500 of our, you know, our, we have a neighborhood downtown. We have billions of dollars of business that was affected by the last flood. You know, the most important thing that we expect of our mayor is someone who will make the decisions to protect their citizens, to protect the tourists, to protect the businesses. This to me is something that we need to move forward with. We've got the right solution in place, the best solution, and I'm a proponent of it. Linda eskin is our guest. She's a candidate for mayor in the August election. Back to continue our conversation after you watch these messages.